Hello everyone, welcome to your super awesome science video. This one is on the layers of the atmosphere and the composition of the atmosphere. So we're going to start by going over exactly what is an atmosphere. Um, the atmosphere is basically a blanket around Earth. And it's a blanket of gases that surround Earth. And the gases are held together by Earth's gravity. So they just don't float off into space because Earth has gravity. Uh, the atmosphere protects life on Earth by absorbing all the UV, which is ultravi ultraviolet solar radiation, which warms the Earth's surface through the greenhouse effect. And the greenhouse effect is what keeps heat in towards Earth. And the atmosphere also protects life on Earth by reducing temperature extremes between day and night. So other planets that don't have an atmosphere have really, really, really hot days and really, 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 really cold nights. And we would not be able to survive on those planets. We wouldn't be able to survive on Earth without the atmosphere. Earth is made of lots of different gases. Um, most people think it's mainly oxygen because we need oxygen to breathe, but that's not true. It's actually nitrogen, 78% nitrogen to 21% oxygen, and then a mixture of several other gases, which include argon, carbon dioxide, water vapor, which is little water droplets living in the air, and um, different other gases that don't amount to very much. The amount of each gas in the mixture is usually very constant from the surface of the planet up to the top of the troposphere. And what that means is if you were able to grab a sample of air from any given spot, it would include relatively the same amount of gas of each type of gas in that sample. So there'd be the same amount of oxygen, the same amount of nitrogen, the same amount of water vapor, etc. Um, the gases are constantly being used and renewed when we breathe, when plants perform photosynthesis, when water evaporates and condensates, and the weathering of rock and decay of organic matter. So all of those things use the gases in the atmosphere. They take them in and they give it back, which makes, it able, makes them able to be renewed. So we just talked about what the atmosphere is made of. Now we're going to talk about how the atmosphere is stacked into layers. It's divided vertically into four layers based on temperature. So the layer that we live on, which is the layer where weather occurs, the closest layer to Earth's surface is called the troposphere. We are moving up away from Earth's surface we're going to get into the stratosphere is the next layer. This is where the ozone is located. Temperature increases in this layer because the ozone absorbs UV rays from the sun. So in the troposphere, we don't have as many UV rays from the sun as the stratosphere does because the stratosphere blocks it from the troposphere. And the reason that it's able to block the ultraviolet rays is because ozone is made up of O3. And the ultraviolet rays can't get through the O3. So O3 is good to have away from us in the stratosphere. However, in the troposphere, O3 is actually bad. O3 is ozone. And um, sometimes in the summertime, if it's really hot outside, you'll notice on the Weather Channel or on the radio, they'll say, um, if you have breathing problems or if you have asthma or if you're a young child or an older person, don't go outside because there's high levels of ozone today. That means it's really not good for your breathing and that means there's a lot of O3 in the troposphere. And sometimes that can happen on hot days, especially when there's a lot of vehicles running and you're in a big city. So this is a diagram just to show you the first two layers we just talked about. The troposphere is the bottommost layer. And if you look at the red line, the red line, there's first of all, there's the x-axis, which shows you temperature. And then on the y-axis, there's height. So if you look at the temperature in the troposphere, notice that it goes down as you move up. So that's why you see the little mountain at the bottom, which is Mount Everest. That's why at the top of the mountain, it's colder, and you, it's represented by the snow at the top. 
So moving up into the atmosphere, it gets much, much colder. So if you were to climb a mountain, literally from the base of the mountain up to the top, you would notice a drastic temperature difference. However, when you move into the stratosphere, the red line changes direction and it actually goes up. That's because there's more ultraviolet rays from the sun. So that warms that layer. The third layer moving up away from the stratosphere is called the mesosphere. Here, temperature decreases again as you move up, just like it does in the troposphere. And above that, the very last layer is the thermosphere. Therm meaning temperature and heat. Temperatures increase in this layer because there's tons of sun and there's very little oxygen to absorb it, so it's very hot. Here's that same diagram. You notice troposphere, as you go up, it gets colder. Stratosphere, as you go up, it gets hotter because there's more ultraviolet rays able to get through. The mesosphere, the temperature goes down again. And the thermosphere, there's no oxygen up there to absorb the sun's rays, and so it is very hot. This is a visual of the different layers um, of the atmosphere as seen from space. Here's another diagram just to give you a different perspective of the layers of the atmosphere. So if you notice, the troposphere, which is the layer that directly surrounds Earth, goes up to about eight miles in the air. So if you were to fly straight up into the air for eight miles, that is how big the troposphere is and how far up it surrounds the Earth. Going up from that, eight miles up into the Earth, if you were to start from eight miles, you go 21 miles up above that and it's the stratosphere. 50 more miles is the mesosphere and almost 200 miles up into the atmosphere is the thermosphere. All weather happens in the troposphere, the layer that's closest to Earth, and that's where the airplanes fly also. Airplanes don't get up above the troposphere. The ozone layer, remember, is in the stratosphere, the layer right above the troposphere. So it's incredibly important that we protect our ozone layer and keep it healthy so that it protects us from the sun's harmful UV rays. So there's two kinds of ozone. There's good ozone and bad ozone. The good ozone, which I briefly, briefly mentioned earlier, is O3. That's concentrated mainly in the stratosphere. The bad ozone is found in the troposphere, and it's also O3, but it's called bad ozone basically because of where it is. It's bad to have ozone in the troposphere because it's harmful for us to breathe in O3. We normally breathe in O2, which is oxygen. Breathing in O3 can lead to asthma, it can damage leaves on plants, it can damage the insects, it, the tissues of insects. So a really good saying is good up high, bad nearby. It's good up high because it protects us from the sun's harmful UV rays, and it's bad nearby because it's not good for us, for plants, or for animals to breathe. Here's a really good visual to show you uh, the ozone layer. So we have Earth. Right above Earth is the troposphere, and then the ozone layer is in the stratosphere right above that. So you can see that there's two different kinds of UV rays in this picture. There's UVA rays and UVB rays. UVB rays are the most harmful rays. UVA rays are still harmful. They're not as harmful as UVB. UVB, you can think of UV bad. So the ozone layer blocks most of the UVB rays. If we have an unhealthy ozone layer, then we're going to have a lot of UVB, which is bad, ultraviolet rays coming through to the troposphere where we live, which we don't want.